Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson here. We're back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored Live. And despite Greg's best attempts, I did not screw up the <laughs> opening, as he is so prone to do. He wants to say things to me right before we start recording, which I love. Greg, the co-pilot, the junior grandmaster himself, I might as well just bring you in right this second because you're not going to shut up. What's up, man? <laughs> I'm not going to shut up. And I got, I love fucking with you right in the beginning. It's just like, how, what kind of dirty comment can I say that will make Matt's face go red and just be like, and then he does the, the shake of the head right before the camera goes live. He's just like, son of a bitch. That's right. <laughs> Fortunately, you guys can't see that, especially if you're listening to the iTunes version of this, which by the way, if you're not go and subscribe either on iTunes or Stitcher. Um, while we wait for people to join us live, whoever is brave enough on Google Hangouts, uh, you can watch us record this thing, which is always a lot of fun uh, because of things like that that Greg does. So you can either uh, subscribe on the YouTube channel and you'll get notifications when our new videos come out, uh, join our email list over at McDanielRealEstateSystems.com or subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher. So Greg, you were uh, blabbing with a couple pe uh, people today. Let's talk about that and then we've got questions from the Facebook group, the Got Objections group, and then we've got a bunch of stuff to get to about the pillars of your real estate business. So this is a, uh, a packed show as always. Yeah, it is, dude. It's a... Uh... Holy mother Christ, that's hot. <laughs> Ow! Oh, sorry. See, like this just... is what Greg gets for waiting until right before the show recording to get his giant 55-gallon uh, drum of coffee with a handle on it. Well, the 55 drums behind me, but, um, so blab, man. So super, super fun. I was doing, I did two blabs, a, a rod that was on our show. He and I are going to, are going to start doing every Friday, um, at 10 o'clock, a blab about tech life, whatever, different cool things. I was up Jason and another guy named Justin. They're going to jump on. These guys are tech master geniuses. Every time I get on with these guys, I learn something. I'm writing something down. Then I'm able to come and bring it to you. So if you guys are have blab, so it's B L A B dot. I am just search real estate uncensored or uh, McDaniel systems and you'll find my blab. It's 10 o'clock um, every Friday. It's a lot of fun, man. Super, super enjoyed. And we got a lot of cool tech tips out of it. Um, and Matt and I might, if Matt can keep his headphones in, <laughs> um, we will probably maybe be putting these up on our YouTube channel. So you guys can enjoy them as well. And you'll get just additional information. So right. interesting. Yeah. That, that or we'll link to them from the website or something like that. Cause yeah. they'll be on somebody else. YouTube channel. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be really good. I actually have a couple of links already for you. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so anything, uh, before we get to the questions from the uh, Facebook group, was there anything interesting that came out? We're talking about a couple of cool things you might want to point out to people to check out from your blabs today. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, guys, there's a thing called IFTTT, -T -T, okay? And you can go to that .com, and it's basically a way that you can post content um, on one vertical, and then it will be, you can create what they call recipes, and then constitute it onto a different vertical. So if you post on Facebook and you do, you know, at, you know, Mac, McDaniel Systems, then it would go to my Twitter feed or anything else. It's really cool. It's, you know, you can also get uh, links from your local chamber of commerce or anything that has updates on cool things that are going on around you. Um, have that, have that, and you can set it automatically, will go out uh, onto your Twitter or to your Facebook or wherever you send it, uh, you can send that information out, whatever you want to do. So mm -hmm. go take a look at it. It's super bitching. Yeah, um, so if anybody's familiar with uh, Zapier, uh, which is like an integration, this is kind of like a consumer version of that. So for example, you can like pin your Instagram uh, posts and you can also like create customized feeds so you can follow certain topics or certain uh, content producers. Like they, they give an example of Time Magazine. So basically it's like IFTTT. It's like if this, then that. So it's ways to set up rules and help apps communicate with each other. So you can do, that's what the recipe is. It's like a way for two different things that aren't meant to communicate to communicate so that you can get them to do what you want them to do. Yeah, it's very, very, it looks really cool. So I'm already thinking of things I can do with this to make my life easier. Like talk to me more. More? Um, more. More. <laughs> okay. man. Um, your next thing, guys, this is just for fun. It's called Google Cardboard. Go take a look at it. It costs about 25 bucks. Uh, you can also, if you go to the right sites, I think I was, uh, Justin was telling me, or Jason was telling me that um, you can get them done with your brand on them. It'd be a cool way to kind of hand out stuff to new clients or a closing gift or something interesting to kind of stand out a little bit. It's kind of for 3D reality, put them to your face and you kind of look around at other shit. But, um, oh, you know what? Something really kind of cool that has nothing to do Oh, Facebook. Okay, this is something I do want to talk about. Facebook and Facebook Live. Um, Facebook just came out with uh, Facebook um, 
Facebook sports stadiums. All right. So this Sunday or any Sunday, whenever someone's listening to this, um, especially right now, they're just doing it for NFL football. But you can go and if you do go to the stadium, you can go see what your friends are saying about the game. So type in like for me, San Francisco Giants, uh, Niners, um, you would be, you know, the uh, what the fuck are you down there? What, why are we talking about the football team down here in San Diego? Yeah, uh, if we still Chargers. have one, they're called the Chargers. Yes, the Chargers. Yes. The, the if anybody's like listening to this in the, in the far future, um, they may not be the San Diego Chargers for no. long as we record this in January no, of 2016. They may be up with uh, wherever they're going to be, but in L.A. Anyways, you can go there and you can see what your friends are saying. You can see what real commentators are saying. You get play-by-play -play to the minute, well, to the second of what's going on on the game. So it's going to be a much more interactive experience. Um as Matt and I have talked about before, I am the most football retarded human being on planet Earth, and I still think that they should use, you know, I think it's still the game that you they use the flat puck, and you have to make so many baskets, right? I think that's, that's right. I think that's well, the, that's that's the term. technical terms for it. Yeah. Okay, good. See, I'm learning. I've been See, studying. Right on. Right on. <laughs> so that's. Um, <laughs> So that's what uh, is going on with Facebook. With Facebook Live, guys, go to Facebook, go to your app store, go to Facebook Mentions, download Facebook Mentions. Uh, that's going to be your live version. And then you can start broadcasting live from your phones only from mobile. Okay. Um, then you can go save it, download it, then re upload it to YouTube, you know, Facebook, or you know, whatever else to reconstitute that, reconstitute that data. So. Learned a lot, man. I learned a lot. It was a great thing. And on a total side subject, you know what I found out yesterday? What's up? My brother's having a second child, and it's going to be a little baby girl. So we are excited. We are, yeah, dude, Brad and Mandy. And and you're finally just... both an aunt and an uncle. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, th I swear to God, man, I'm like, I'm going to get Matt today. He's on a roll. I don't know what comedy he's been watching. I got to get going on that. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you had one one last uh, tech tip before we move on. I do. Yeah, uh, appear dot in. Oh, so appear dot in. Yeah. Like a, uh, something similar to Blab with some of the best characteristics of Google Hangouts, which so basically allows you to create a room where you can host a video chat and invite up to eight friends. So it's twice as many people as Blab. And in order to uh, basically get people and in, or invite people to join you all you have to do is copy and share the link which is exactly how we do this for Google Hangouts so to me this is um, something that you can definitely use like, uh, like kind of similar to what me and Greg are doing uh, and we'll talk more in the future about kind of different ways that you can build a platform for yourself as an agent um, we've got an episode coming up where we uh, interview John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire and we'll go over some of the ways that you as a real estate agent might want to use podcasting. This is another form of that, just basically a video form of podcasting where you can very easily bring in guests onto your own show, make yourself a mini celebrity. Yeah, uh, peer.in or uh, if you, I don't think that goes, that doesn't go live video streaming though, from my understanding. So if you want to go out live, use Blab, hit the record button, like I on the two that I've done, um, one of them is ready to be re, re, uh, re um, uh, pushed back out to any any other sources I want, the one I did first. But they'll give you the video back, and then you can reuse it and answer questions live. I love Blab for that answer. It's, it's I asked everybody, do you think it's going to be going towards more education or more entertainment? And the consensus was majority of what everyone's saying is it should go more towards entertainment because this thing is in its infancy. I think it could really... It's like me, man. You, everyone knows I'm dyslexic. I don't like freaking reading. But this, I can go get the exact information I want. I can interact with the with the people if it's live, and then I can rewatch the you know the replays and go get all the, all the data. But I don't have to read it. I can listen and watch it. It's mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna start a blab where it's just nothing but me reading my favorite books out loud, just so, so Greg doesn't have to read. So, are you going to wear a cardigan and go change your shoes as I soon might, as you get in? I might. I might. Exactly. I gotta, <laughs> oh. I'm going to take, uh, take off my loafers and put on my chucks. Hello, everybody. This is Matt Johnson's Hour of Book Time. Today, we're going to be we're going to be entering again back into the wild world of blah, blah, blah. Oh, shit. It's not <laughs> yeah, and it fell apart from there. Okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> Crash so and burn. let me see if we can answer some actual real estate questions here real quick. I found a couple of really interesting ones. And right, two, sure two on the same subject. So by the way, if anybody's not already a member of this group, me and Greg are both members. It was started by our friend Aaron Wittenstein. It's facebook.com slash groups slash God objections, right? Mm -hmm. So 
There was two people that had very very similar questions about getting the listing signed at the listing appointment. So Sarah That's Leonard asked. Of it. That's the whole point of it, listing. Well, appointment. not quite, because I'm I'm interested to see what you have to say about this, because you actually don't get the listing signed at the listing appointment. You get verbal agreement, but then Eileen sends it and they sign it electronically. Let's see the question. Okay. Number Vanna, one, Sarah Leonard. Vanna, please show us your. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> please show us the question. Can I buy an eight? Yeah, you can't buy a vowel. All right, so Sarah Leonard asks, when scheduling a listing appointment, how many of you ask if the seller will be ready to sign the paperwork at the listing appointment, and do you get a lot of pushback on that? And then uh, Denise Sl Sladek, or Sladek uh, has a question on the back end because she had the same issue. I need help with this. Just had three potential listings slip through my hands because I didn't get them to sign when they verbally committed to me. She, so she says, I met with them. I stayed in touch. I delivered holiday gifts. Over the past three weeks, I've discovered that they listed with other agents and two already have accepted offers after being on the market for a week. Two of them were expired. So that's got to hurt. Uh, one was a network connection. I will never let this happen again. I need to know how to get them to sign uh, when they when they verbally commit. So both of them basically have had the same issue. They go to the listing appointment. They get some type of verbal agreement that, yes, they're going to list, but they don't get the listing paperwork signed on the spot, and then they find out they actually did not get the listing and they did not have the commitment they thought they had. So... How do you handle that, Greg, or how do you prevent that or fix it? Well, it starts with bringing the light. Like I continuously say, it's not about the close, guys. It's about the open. You have to open strong. I mean, stronger than you ever open up with value. Why are you, why is Greg McDaniel a better option than Matt Johnson when it comes to the listing uh, you know, opportunity, when it comes to the different agents? Think of every single thing that you're going to do, even down to the smallest details and bullet point this out and show them what they're doing. Go in there with content uh, and that's going to affect their lives. We took a listing for a million three fifty the other day and we sat for I don't know, a couple hours talking and it, all I did was dump tons of information on them like, oh, it's an investment property. Oh, let's talk about 1031 exchange. Okay, what are we going to do with the money afterwards? Do you want to put into hard money lending? Do you want to go out and you talk to my buddy Ben Smith who was on the on the show and go and buy properties around the country for on the cheap essentially uh, and make positive cash flow back plus that equity? You know, what's the best move for you? And we just bantered back and forth. And at the end of that listing agreement, the wife looked at the husband and the husband's like, well, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll talk and get back to you. And she just like literally like smacks him in the arm and goes, we don't need to talk to anybody else. Greg, we're listening with you. And I'm like, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you made me my cheers name. to that. Yes. Cheers to her. High five. Uh, actually, we're going to get probably try to get uh, Claudia on our show. She can show people how to take a set amount of time. Like if a listing or appointment or some sort of process takes this much time, she can show people how to cut it in half. No, that's right. Different stuff. She yeah, has. you told me a little bit about her. So that's the first thing, guys. You know, show the value. You don't. You don't. You can subtly drop hints like us, we, team, different words when you talk to them right off the bat. You get on to you meet them, Matt, Julie, your three twelve pound babies. It's great to meet you guys. You know, as we have as we have an opportunity to work together, we're gonna we're gonna go through a lot of ups and downs. You know, good thing that we're a team. You know, see how that's going together psychologically and start being bound to you. And then just say, folks, if, if these numbers make sense, would you be willing to, you know, move forward tonight? You know, question mark? Not like, you're going to move forward tonight, bitch. No, that's probably not what you want to do. But if you said, Matt, would you be willing to move forward tonight? Yeah, Greg, of course I would. We think you're awesome. And we're, you're the only team we'd ever use in our entire life. Even if we have to move, we're going to have you do our deal. That's well, right. thanks, Matt. Um, but then bring the, bring a listing agreement. If you're afraid of it, bring a listing agreement filled out minus the price to the to the appointment what's it going to hurt they said they want to go move forward all of a sudden you're like oh look what i seem to have here here's my listing agreement let's go over it together so everybody's clear on how we're going to move forward to tomorrow as a, as a team is that okay with you fantastic let's look let's look at it that's yeah, so how Greg, I, you don't uh, you don't when you're setting up the appointment you're not you don't ask a bunch of qualifying questions in terms of well if i do well and everything sounds good are you ready to sign the listing agreement on the spot like you're you're just setting up a standard listing appointment and then everything else psychologically is taken care of by how you present yourself within the listing presentation, right? It is. Um, so I've shown you guys this book before, this this team book that we hand out and kind of goes through different things about what we do and how cool we are. And first page is meeting the team and all this, all this jazz. Um, I hand that out and I bring that to listing appointments. It's like catnip to cats, man. <laughs> they they're all over it and they get serious? oh and they get frisky afterwards they're just like oh my god that, that's amazing that's so professional it's like, oh my oh look at the colors i'm like what are you guys on acid it's just a color flyer 
Okay. But you no, know, but it, but it shows the professionalism. So let's say you're just starting out. You know, go get something made up. I mean, everybody has a history about something. You know, talk about your brokerage. Talk about you. Talk about your team. Because, like we've said, you know, you have a team. You have a receptionist. You have a transaction coordinator. You have a lender. You have a escrow officer. You have yourself. You know, if you have a you know you do have a team, introduce them in as well. Um, the gal that gave me the idea for this. Um, you know, that's exactly what she did. Talked about her lender, talked about, you know, TC, talked about all these other folks. And it, it, it makes you appear bigger than you actually are. And that's okay. As long as the team can perform upon what you say, that's all that really matters. I mean, you could be a purple Smurf standing up, upside down in mud, but if you can get their home sold for 20% over the listing price, they don't care. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> That, that is very true. Uh, it reminds me of another question I spotted uh, on the group. I wasn't gonna, planning on bringing this to you necessarily, but you did mention selling over list price. So one of the guys in the group asked, he actually took a, a FISBO listing presentation and he filled out the seller net sheet for them. And the guy gets down to the bottom of the net sheet and he's like, well, you told me that you could net me at this at or more than I could if I sold it myself, but the net sheet says differently. So I would, I would actually save money if I listed and sold the home myself and didn't have to pay your commission. So he Whoops. <laughs> unintentionally shot himself in the foot. And it goes back to how you present yourself in uh, before you even show up to and in the listing presentation. I, I can't see you, Greg, even making that claim before you get in there and see what the numbers are. No, and that's what I I, I tell people right off the bat, and I say, hey, Matt, Julie. Um, you know, I, it is physically impossible for me to price a home without seeing it. It's like buying a car without ever seeing it. You just wouldn't, couldn't do it. And so when can I get over there and take a look at it? And then that's when I come over and I, you know, show them this. I, I, again, it's the value rocket ship, guys. I'm, I'm wooing them like I'm on a date going, hey, look at me, baby. I'm super sexy. You know, no, oh, that's yeah. enough of that. So the value <laughs> market ship, moving I'm just going to cut you off right there before voice. it gets even creepier. Oh, come uh, on. That was going to go somewhere yeah. good, too. <laughs> Our increasingly male audience, I think, just even got disgusted with that one. <laughs> Their whole other backbones are like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It makes your, makes your hair tingle. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, basically, Matt. your approach is set it up set it up properly, take a consultative approach, kind of like we talked about in the last episode. So your, yeah. your approach is to go in there. You don't overpromise in order to sell the appointment. The, no. the, the team and all the, the all the value that you have to present them should sell them on the appointment. Then from within the appointment, the value that you, you present to them should and the relationship and the way that you're building that relationship within the listing appointment prevents that from happening where you leave and all of a sudden they're like, meh, he was all right. Well, we'll look at some other people. I've had better. Yeah, I've had better. <laughs> I've, had, I've had better. Um, but it, it, it's all, that is true, Matt. And like yesterday, for example, I had a call. I was doing my cold calls and stuff. And this lady called me from Alaska. She has a home in Walnut Creek that she has that they never are at. And they're going to sell this year. Um, and she she peppered me with questions. And she asked me a very strategic question. I didn't know I was being interviewed for the listing appointment right then and there. I thought she was just a respondent. But she's like, so I don't like doing open houses. Uh, I'm not going to do open houses. And I, that's just how it is. I just never like open houses. And I'm like, okay, it's no problem. You know, we don't have to do them. In today's day and age, everyone's seeing the home vi virtually uh, online first. And then they t contact either the listing broker, which would be us. See how I built that in there? Be us. I was already working with her mentally. Um, and then, or, or their own agent to go see the home. So we don't need to do a broker's tour. She's like, okay, good. Because the agent that I talked to when I was back a couple of months ago said that we had to do open houses. And that's the only way she could get the house sold for that price. And I'm going, gotcha, bitch. I just hook, line, and sinkered it. And I didn't even know. But the point I'm saying here is go in there with pure honesty, knowledge about your strengths, and be willing to walk away if it's the better interest of the client. That's going to come across so powerfully to the other side. Because I always tell people, I say, hey, look, Matt and Julie, I am incredibly blessed to be working with your family. Um, you know what? The good thing is with us is that we work on your schedule, on your timeline. We have the opportunity uh, and the grace to work with you know dozens of families every single year to help them transition from either buying or selling real estate. Now we are honored, like I said, to work with you when we want your business, but we don't need your business. So what I mean by that is that I'm not going to push you on my timeline. I don't have a credit card bill. I don't have a mortgage. I don't have a car payment. I must pay. 
So when it's ready for you, it's going to be ready for us. Is that okay with you? And that that is a closer. <laughs> um, What's that? An actual closing script, Greg? It was a. It was when I first talked to them, Matt, and I'm opening with that. Going, I, uh, Matt, I just want uh, you to understand how awesome I am. Um, no, but no, all jokes aside, cool. no, it really is. It really comes. I actually said it one time. Just, it just came out of my mouth. I just made it up as I went uh, because this, I could tell the lady was nervous about having. Like, I was gonna. She was waiting for me to push her to like. We got to go on the market now. But I didn't. I did that. You could literally see the stress come out of her. She was just like, oh, like a deflating balloon. Like, so thankful for that non-pressure. So try it next time, guys. Try it on your listing appointments. Ladies, if you hear this, who asked the questions, try it. You know, it, it could, it may have a very positive effect on your business like it has on mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard a, a really good quote. If anybody is not already signed up for this, um, go to the uh, it's incompareableexpert.com and sign up for Jason Leister's daily client letter. It's ridiculously good. This I've sent a forward, or forward a couple of them to you, Greg, because I, I want you to read them even though you don't like to read, but they're a page long. Uh, I think you should be able to handle it. Anyway, one of the reading in, uh, in his email yesterday, I think it was, was that attraction is created when they want you more than you want them. Attraction is destroyed as soon as they figure out that you want them more than they want you. I'm going to use that in my dating life. It's true in all areas of life, Greg. Yes, it is, Matt. No, it is really true, though, because if you go on commission breath, you know, they're going to be like, eh, I have no value for you. But if you're just like, hey, look, I can take, you take it or leave it, but whatever. I, you know, I'm the best there is, and that's, the, that's all there is to it. You're lost if you don't. Yeah, there you go. Cool. We actually All right. Well, we got uh, three questions from the Facebook group knocked out. That's awesome. What do you say we uh, give out some shout outs and then we'll get into a regular content about the pillars of your real estate business? Yeah, let's do it, man. You, I'll, right. you, Matt, I'll let you go first because I know you like going go first. Okay. Yo. All right. Uh, so viral marketing, number one, uh, check them out at getviral.com. Obviously, they do a phenomenal job running Greg's real estate video blogs. So if you want to generate more referrals and repeat business from your existing database, check them out. Uh, and then equity with two Qs. They have the buyer lead generation platform that's built from the ground up for solo agents. Uh, it's very, uh, very affordable because they actually hook you up with a lender that subsidizes the cost of the leads. And it's the perfect number of leads for a solo agent to work consistently to actually get real, actual deals, real oh sales. How about that? No. I know. Real uh, deals? So, real deals. Uh, so get uh, get in touch with Greg, take the McDaniel Challenge, and he will let you know you know what markets it's available in. Uh, keep in mind, it doesn't matter if it's not already available in your market. If you get four other people, we can bring it there for you. So uh, we can figure out how to get it done. Uh, the Pierce, the guy that runs that program, actually works out of the same office as Greg. So we've got the personal hookup to, uh, to get you hooked up. So Greg, who do you want to shout out? Well, first, um, I want to talk Neely. You're an amazing woman. I had so much fun talking to you. I mean, this woman's got a personality, man. I mean, she and I would just jabbered on and we're chatting and she was so pissed at you because she thought that you were cheating on me when you were working with your other co uh, clients that you do uh, oh. blabs with and everything else. How, and, how and dare I consult with other real estate clients? Oh, how dare you have your own day and job? By the way, you're not a client. You're my partner, which she didn't understand that. Yeah, but yeah. you know, she and I, but as soon as I told her that it's okay, I'm, I'm okay with Matt doing other, working with other people. She's like, Okay, as long as you're okay with it. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but she, dude, okay, so she, she, she's addicted to us. She told me that she's pissed at us um, when we don't have new content and that she has to wait for it for a day. Oh, and, God, uh, heaven forbid. And her husband is so upset. She, he's always like, honey, who are these two men that you always are taking into the bathroom when you're getting ready in the morning? I don't like this at all. Uh, she's like, look, it's, it's Greg and Matt. What do you want me to do? I'm learning this stuff. And they banter back and forth. They have a great relationship. They have three beautiful children, but you know, um, it was, it was really, really, really pretty funny. And, uh, she is going to kill it. As soon as we figured out all the different verticals, she basically was a secret agent, man. We found out multiple different verticals, multiple different things that she can go do and get her name out there. I see phenomenal things for you, Neely. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, the other night, Matt, Matt, we talked for two hours, man. We Good Lord. Good. I, know, Good I know. That's what you call customer service, dude. You give <laughs> what the people want and need. That's right. I actually had so much fun. I didn't even realize two hours had gone by. But Kevin Roseville, just up north of me a little bit. Super cool dude, man. He is a financial analyst, um, which I find incredibly intriguing. Because what is the one thing that every single dipshit real estate agent, and I'm included in this pack, blabs on about but has absolutely no clue about? 
<laughs> well, I'm not even going to remotely touch answering that question. Greg, right. you already have an answer in mind. What do you think? Yes, I do, Matt. It's the future of the market. Where is this market going? And uh, you know who can actually analyze this? So I've encouraged him to go out to multiple different sources, get the data, both you know hyper local, you know regional and national, then start doing video or a written blog of some sort talking about why and what the the effects of the overall market is going to have effect on the real estate market and so on and so forth. Do that twice a month, you know, get that out there. That is incredibly valuable information. I know for myself, I could, if I could read the regional one like California or West Coast or whatnot, that'd be a lot of help. I could go and really use that data. So Kevin, I really want to um, give you a shout out, man. I think phenomenal things are going to happen. And he, so he also likes, he likes hiking, right? I asked him what kind of things he's into. He just like a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago, created a hiking group. Dude, check these numbers out. 80 people have already signed up for his hiking group and 17 of them have confirmed for this Saturday's hike. Holy cow. I was blown. I'm like, oh my God, seriously? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, so go get, he works for Realty One. I'm like, go get a Realty One hat and wear that bitch. <laughs> and start, um, when you're huffing and puffing next to somebody and they're, you're wearing a Realty One, you don't have to do any talking. That's going to do all the talking yeah. for itself. So um, Kev, keep up with me, man. Um, I want to know everything about how that how that goes. So, cool. they're my two man. I had, I had an amazing week talking with with folks. Yeah. So, well, re refresh people's memory. So, the McDaniel challenge. Oh yes, the McDaniel challenge. Hashtag do not let Greg spend a night alone. Uh, it is when you guys are going to get a uh, hour of my time or more, um, and uh, you know we're going to talk about everything real estate. Anything that's blocking you, anything that's stopping you, anything that's you know, kind of getting in your way, you know, let's come up with a custom marketing plan for you. Look, guys, this, if, if I was a charge for this, this would be a very expensive hour because I'm going to literally give you a personalized go kick ass plan if you just do it. Um, like the people in my AIM class right now, Matt, my agents in motion that Rockcliffe, I have 10, 10 amazing people in there. Five of them listened to me when I told them to go out and do a certain specific type of prospecting. One got a contract and picked up three, got a contract accepted. And this is in three days, by the way. Contract accepted, three additional clients. The other four have picked up one to two active clients just by doing this very simple technique I taught, I taught them. So I'm very, very blessed with them. That's what you guys can get. So call me, text me, my phone, my personal cell phone, 925-915-1978. Again, 925-915-1978. Call me, text me, book a time, just do it. All right. Oh, here's another funny thing. Everybody I talked to this week, and Neely's husband was convinced of this, and so was Kevin, so was David. You know, they're all like, "So, what's the catch? You know, um, what's what's when? When are you going to ask for the credit card? You know, yeah. when are you going to when are you going to when the sales pitch going to take place?" And I'm like, "There is no sales pitch. There is no catch. It is legitimately just an hour of kicking it and getting you going." So, guys, if you, if that's stopping you from contacting me. There is no catch at yeah. all. Yeah, there, there really isn't. So, I mean, we have the, uh, like, we have a farming training product. You can look at, uh, check out on our site. Just go to, like, the five minutes to, uh, to farming link at the top. Um, even the first three videos in that are free. But, yeah, I mean, like, we'll have, we're coming out with some classes and stuff like that um, later in the quarter. Um, but, yeah, we're not, uh, definitely not selling anything, not trying to rope people into, like, year-long coaching contracts and all that mm -hmm. BS that's going on. So Not at all so guys now the pay barrier is gone get your bitch ass on the phone and call me that's right <laughs> take mcdaniel challenge uh if you're listening to this and you can't write his number down uh, and that is his real number by the way just go to mcdanielchallenge.com and matt's right, tested so. it he knows that's it well i set it up so yeah um, and i do text you on a regular basis just to make sure i still do have your accurate phone number <laughs> is it still real has he changed this that, that is his real one okay so let's talk about the pillars of your real estate business so the reason why i wanted to uh, why i kind of pitched this as a uh, an idea for a show to greg is i, I see just from kind of keeping an eye on the facebook group uh, that we mentioned the god objections uh group uh i i keep a pretty good pulse on what the average uh kind of the um agent on the street I guess is is thinking and and what kind of questions are out there in the real estate community and uh, and Jeff Lobb our friend who was on the show last month we're gonna have him on again real soon mm -hmm. uh, he had a I don't know if you caught that Greg he had like a little Facebook live video uh, that he recorded he was talking about the state of uh, these Facebook groups and all the different like just wildly different responses like somebody put up a question like hey I'm new and I'm just looking for ideas on how to get more clients click and they're like just 
flooded with like a hundred different responses and a hundred different ideas and stuff like that. And, no, I got to see that though. That's awesome. And like, you know, 75 of them are, are BS, <laughs> you know, and, but you had one person that actually put like their, like the whole strategy behind their team's success, like just laid it out there. Really? And somebody had the nerve to ask them, yeah, but what's your ROI on that? What a dick. And you're just like, you just want to shoot yourself in the head. Yeah. So it's, um, so the reason why I wanted to talk about the pillars of your real estate business is because it really is not like when you really dig into the structure of some of the top teams in the country, which I've been fortunate enough to, to meet or work with in some capacity, either through viral marketing or through the independent consulting that I do. And then, Greg, you're the same way. You've gone to a bunch of different conferences and you've listened to people speak and you've met a lot of the same people I have. When you really dig into their business, right, you find out that most of the time they are supported by usually one really big thing and then in general most of their eight, say 80% of their business comes from really two to three different sources. Yeah, they, I would they each have that. three maybe four pillars of their business. There's really not a lot. They may be doing a lot of stuff and there, there may be a lot of shiny objects that they're involved in whether it's lead gen systems and they may have boomtown and commissions inc and all this stuff but fundamentally it usually comes down to just a couple of things. So I wanted Greg to share first kind of what's uh, the structure of your team. You're going and restructuring kind of your lead gen processes right now. I yeah. want you to share with people kind of what's going on in your world and we'll talk about the structure of your pillars and then we'll get into what some of what the other top agents are doing around the country. Yeah, so what we're, we looked at our business last year and we always do this. We grew our business by 23% uh, from 2015 to from 2014. So it was a significant jump. And we were like, okay, so how did we achieve this? And we went back and we found that me doing calls and then Chris doing biking and then Terry doing networking, getting referrals, that's where we built our business. So we said, okay, so where are we leaking and, you know, just like a sieve of yeah, money going problem. out? And we found it was online. Now, for I'm not saying that it's, that's right for everybody else. We found that for us that all these lead gen systems, the only one we're keeping is equity. Uh, because that's the only one that's delivering actual quality leads to us. The rest of them are just tire kickers, and we've been drowned by them. And so we're 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 downloading all of them. We're cutting them all off, and we're going to cut about six of them off. Um, because of course, you leave me in a in an office with a corporate credit card and a lead generation sites in front of me. Watch out <laughs> and drain the account. <laughs> um, but we're, we're we're dumping them. We're going to probably save you know, about two plus thousand dollars a month. So I'm gonna, what we're doing with that is I'm hiring a friend of mine who is incredibly personable. Her name is Gina. She's going to come and she's going to sit right over here behind me or in her home. She's going to use Mojo. She's going to call through all of those leads religiously. She's going to do then do circle prospecting for us. And all she's going to do is set up appointments for us to come see. And if she's not doing that, she's going to be uh, just re retouching these folks so that they know that we're still here, that we still care. We didn't just vanish into thin air. We're not a flyby agent or a team. Um, and since she is entrenched in the neighborhoods for us, it's uniquely awesome because she can connect with a lot of folks that she knows. Um, so that's how we're doing it. We, we found where our strengths are. We know that we're based a high on our, on our uh, referral side. And then me doing cold calls, I've been doing, I've, I've done, dude, I've done at least 80 plus thousand cold calls at this point myself. And when you do that many, you're going to get good at it. You're going to set appointments on it. Um, and so that's, that's where we are right now. Have you now, Matt, Jeff, is he doing anything like this or is he more tech? No, so that's the interesting thing about it. I was just gonna I was thinking about that because that to me, it, at least until some like some sort of technological game changer like comes in and just wipes out real estate as we know it, who knows? But from what I see, the future of real estate, at least in the short term, is uh, ISA teams, OSAs, whatever you want to call them, depending on whether they work in or outside of your office. But basically, having sales agents call through the leads because everybody is finding out the same thing: uh, the quality of leads is going down because you have more people shopping all these different sites. Uh, to search for homes are coming up on everybody's website and so nobody you know you're not going to get all those leads and so um, it's a consequence of the fact that every, a lot of people are capturing the same leads that the lead quality is going down so what do you need well you need people to make contact with those folks and figure out whether they're tire kickers right because they may not mm -hmm. close for Je basically Jeff's research uh, and they track religiously so they looked at all the 100,000 calls that they made last year, and that's not a joke, by the way, 100,000 calls. I wouldn't doubt that uh, at all. Just, just between, between their agents. That doesn't count their overseas assistance, by the way. So 100,000 calls, on average, they, they're very... Um, they're very internet lead gen heavy, so they, they're running Google AdWords to their Boomtown site and capturing email opt-ins from, from that source and then calling them back. So anyway, 
they're very heavy on that. And over all those calls that they made, which include all their sphere and all their other forms of prospecting, uh, it takes on average about six months to close a lead. And yeah. uh, it takes something like you know 33 calls before you can really, like 33 legitimate leads that have been scrubbed. You know that they're legitimate. Out of those 33, you can expect on average one deal. Uh, I would suspect in, in markets like yours, Greg, and, and some other resort markets, the, from what I hear, the ratio is even less than that, maybe one in 70. So knowing those things going in, uh, they are, so basically they're using their more people to call through more leads because that's what it's going to take to sift out all these extra leads that maybe aren't ready for a year or two or they're just looking or they're out of state or whatever the case is. Or so you've got Wi-Fi or, company. Or, or, yeah, or, or they had something or like they, they, someone die, they just want to value for something like that, you know, mm -hmm. that bullshit. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons people look at homes online nowadays that have nothing to do with them wanting to buy a home in the next three months, which is what everybody wants. When somebody says a, a lead is not good quality or they're a tire kicker, it's because they're not ready to do something in three to six months. Which well, is fine. Let, that's let's, not, let's, that's let's not qualify something here. The, the, an internet, what we're talking about, uh, 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 someone that goes, you know, Facebook, click, now you get their information. Guys, that's not a lead. That is a responder. Okay? You Then you have to go vet them, and then when you vet them, that becomes a valid lead. So yeah. there, ha that, there has to be that distinction. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the difference between... A what we might call a cold lead or a suspect or something like that or a prospect, would, which would be a better term for that, versus mm -hmm. a um, a marketing qualified lead or yeah. somebody that's been qualified by like an inbound rep and has actually spoken to an actual person and they did mean to sign up and they do know what it's for and they are interested. So, so yeah, so basically you've got teams like um, so thousandcallsaday.com, which is a company of uh, that does uh, usually inbound or outbound teleprospecting. Uh, that was based on Jeff Cohn's model. So um, you've got that company. You've got Tim Heil has got his group Phone Animal, uh, which is exploding. Like my my friend Andrew Pykoff down in Houston just signed up for them. I mean, they're, they're signing up a ton of clients because what they're doing, and, and Rockerbox is in the same family of companies, basically they are call centers, and they will call through all those people that all they did was sign up on your website, and they will call them and figure out how many of those people are serious. And that, that seems to be that's the big need in real estate right now, whether you're an individual agent or a team, is somebody has to be calling those people and figuring out who they really are. Yeah, they do. I mean, it's, it's what we're talking about here in, re in regards to respondents or leads. So Peter and Pete, we had uh, one of our last episodes, which unfortunately we had a technical glitch and it, we lost part of the back end of that conversation. But he has, a, he has callers that re receive calls, about a thousand plus a day. And then his folks will vet them out and kind of throw them into one bucket or throw them into another bucket. And then they go from there. That is a lead. I mean, yeah. in a rocker box or, you know, phone animal or these other ones. I mean, if you got, do they do circle prospecting for you as well or for them or is it just lead response? Mm, uh, Rockerbox is basically lead response tied to Boomtown accounts. Uh, okay. uh, I think Phone Animal will do circle prospecting. I know for sure that a thousand calls a day dot com will do uh, outbound circle prospecting for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. If you guys yeah. have a few extra pennies, man, go 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 take a look at them. It's where it's going to save your fingers a lot of dialing and you a lot of time. And you all you need to do is get that appointment in your in your calendar and just go. Mm -hmm. Close. And here's here's the interesting thing, Greg. So you asked about Jeff's team. So I was digging into the numbers um, because they, they, like I said, they track everything obsessively and have access to their like their master database from last year. Mm -hmm. So they're even though they are extremely heavy in internet lead gen, like he is the poster child for Boomtown, like online lead generation for buyers, right? When you actually dig into their numbers, their top lead sources are um, Sphere. In referral, yeah. So even for them, the individual agents con staying in touch with their sphere and then uh, getting referrals from people that may have been they may have been internet lead gen, you know leads at one point, but now they're they're referring people over to them either off of deals or even sometimes before their own deal is done, they'll send you a referral. And then after that, then it's the internet lead gen is their next biggest. Um, so getting back to like the, the pillars of your business, so Jeff breaks everything down. I love this system because it makes it super easy to remember, very simple, and, and you can figure out kind of where you want to go and what pillars you want to install in your business. But he breaks it down into what he calls the three buckets, which are sphere, um, internet lead gen, and prospecting. And prospecting is all of your, whether it's circle prospecting, expireds, FISBOs, open houses, 
whatever falls into you reaching out to people you don't know to contact them about possibly buying or selling. So though, if you just want a rough category of potential pillars for your business, sphere, internet lead generation, and prospecting. So Greg, you guys are cutting off a lot of the internet lead generation. You're moving more towards lead scrubbing and lead conversion of the leads that you already have because you know that you, you already have your sphere, you have your prospecting, you're doing a lot of circle prospecting, and then you've got your the internet lead gen wasn't producing the results that you want, so you're trying to convert the leads that you already have. So basically yeah. you've got, we would consider basically three pillars of your business, right? Yeah, those are our three key pillars. I mean, we've been blessed, like I keep saying, to work in the area for a long period of time. And so we have a, a reputation. Uh, we don't need to wear uh, name badges or anything like that just because we're... we're yeah household name essentially in some parts of the of the area greg walking around danville is like norm from cheers yeah just not as fat <laughs> <laughs> um, greg. greg oh my god there he is get a photo <laughs> um but no the, the big pillar for us to get started was doors then do calls and mailers are have been huge for us um, we're looking into some additional technology, um, and I'm going to vet it before I want to talk about it. That's going to, uh, we just signed up for it. That's basically going to be like a digital, digital assault on people's Facebook pages within a radius of a property we just sold, we just listed, and their call to actions are very interesting because it's not like, you know, hey, you think about buying or selling? They have some very unique call to actions, and for 49 bucks to get 2,500, you know, views on this, it'll vet very quickly to see what it does. And so if we could, if I can attack their Facebook, you know, within a certain radius and, and they actually have an algorithm Matt, that, um, vets out like who the most likely people are to sell. And I'm like, Hmm, sounds familiar, like real agile. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Um, but if, if it works, shit, man, that's, that's amazing stuff right there to, you know, pair them and Terry up together. I and mean, that's a killer product. So yeah, it, it's, it's a lot. Well, it's not like you can't take the same stuff. concepts that the Terry that underlies the real agile technology that Terry's come up with and apply those same things to marketing on Facebook because Facebook demographics do allow you to get super, super detailed. So it's they really do. just a matter of, are you looking for quite the right things? Yeah, very true. But as long as, I mean, people, if you guys are thinking about what your core is right now, go back. If, if you did one deal or if you did a hundred deals, go back and source every single one of those. Then, you know, plus category, negative category. Well, we got more in here. Well, then guess what, guys? It's real easy. More money at it. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's not like it, the history does have a weird way of repeating itself. So if you throw a little bit more dough at it, history might repeat itself in a bigger way for you. Yeah, that's that's what uh, I was just talking to Jeff about this the other day. He was going through the the ROI tracker part of their their database, mm -hmm. and they always have ten lead sources that they're putting money into, but eighty percent of it goes into the top three, and most of that goes into AdWords in their particular case because that's what they found works for their team mm -hmm. uh, with the structure and the training that they have. They can capitalize on those, but they're like always look, looking at where are we shifting, like shifting money from the stuff that isn't working, putting more money into the stuff that is, and then those other five or six or seven lead sources that don't get the majority of the money is for two things, variety and to stay ahead of the market or stay on top of developing trends. So mm -hmm. like Greg Zuck talked about, who knows if this technology is going to work for blasting people's Facebook pages within a radius of a house, but good Lord, if it works for 50 bucks a month, that's an experiment that's worth trying for six months or a year. Well, yeah, and there's another experiment that we're going to be that I'm going to be trying. It's going to be a much more expensive experiment, but as we've discussed, <laughs> the juice is the holy grail. Yeah, if it works, yeah. holy fuck, dude, it's going to be game changer. Any client, any any agent in my area, I feel totally bad for you because I will literally, I'm gonna, it will be just me stepping on your throat as you're drowning. <laughs> and then, but I'll smile. Okay. I'll smile the whole way. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so okay, we got about 15 we minutes left. So let's uh, let's talk about why you'd only want to build one one pillar time. So let's talk about it from the from the perspective of someone that is getting into the business for the first time or the second time or or breaking into a new area, whatever the case is. So you don't have a bunch of existing pillars in your business, and you need to establish what your pillars are. So right. Greg, from your perspective. You know, if you were going into the business for the first time or, or re-entering it, why would you want to focus on one thing as opposed to trying to install three or four different ways Very. to find clients all at one time? First off, anyone that's listening to my area, you know I'm kidding and I love you guys. Um, but 
Um, the reason why I'd only do one vertical is because if you if you get distracted by multiple verticals, you're not going to become really good at that one vertical. So for year one, focus on one thing that you're really good at. And then, you know what, if, if you want to do next year, do one, do, add one more, okay? Grow that way. Don't go a mile wide and inch deep. Go, a, you know, an inch wide and a mile deep. That's what, and then you become proficient at it. You become the expert at it. People will recognize you and see that. Yeah, that guy's a master door knocker, caller, networker, uh, blabber, internet you know, converter, you know, internet lead converter, right? So pick your niche and then dive all in. Read books on it, re, you know, listen to blabs, listen to uh, podcasts. I mean, just become absolutely the best of the best in that realm and if you don't know any if you have a couple of people that you know that are really good at it go find the absolute best and go ask to sit at their feet and learn from their knowledge yeah. that is what will make you money in the shortest amount of time while you're not distracted doing all this other crazy shit everywhere you know go do that like uh, like kevin dude he's not going to do video he's not comfortable doing video all right great but you're great at networking and you like getting outside go get them that's your vertical so think about that, guys. As you're thinking, think about what you like, what you enjoy, and then go make money off of it. Yeah, you, you took the words out of my mouth because that's the very first – when I was sitting thinking about what I would do or what I would recommend somebody if I were in that situation, I, that's the exact first thing that came to my mind. So to me, it's it's skill set mastery, mm -hmm. right? So the people that I know that run some of the top teams in the country, they're usually them as the team leader got really, really good at X, whatever X is. And it's, what, what's interesting about it is it's something different for everyone. Like Dan yeah. Beer, one of the top guys here in San Diego, kills expireds. I mean, he listed Ladanian Tomlinson's house, relisted after somebody else couldn't sell it and listed and sold it for more money than they couldn't sell it for. Um, I mean, this guy's a, a master at taking and selling expired listings. And by the way, since you don't know, LaDainian Tomlinson is a football player. The foosball? He plays the foosball? Yeah, yeah foosball. He plays the foosball. Um, <laughs> so, but then you've got guys at Jeff, like Jeff Cohn that mastered their sphere. They're really, really good at, and we're not talking about like a lot of in-person like networking, schmoozing, glad handing. We're talking about picking up the phone and then meeting people one-on-one -on -one for coffee and, and drinks and stuff like that. Just got really, really good following up with and having genuine conversations with people in the sphere and sucking more people into a sphere and training them how to refer business to them. So he got really good at that one thing. So it, it may be different for somebody else, but if you never take the time to get really good at that, then you can't teach somebody else how to do it either and you really can't, you'll never be good enough at something that you get exponential results out of it. So and I'll yeah. get to that in a second. but. The other thing is, is uh, time and testing, and, and if you go back and watch the episode from a couple of days ago with Pete and Peter, Peter Vexelman, the, the investor guy, remember what he said about, like, it was like 40 minutes into that interview, he said one of the best things I've ever heard, I actually pulled the quote out and used it as the, the key quote for that whole episode, and he said that, um, what, was the, what was the quote, N um, there are no secrets in marketing, it's just that 99% of the people don't know how to do it right, and 1% make all the money. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> That's a great quote. Look, if you want to master something, like if you want to, let's, and he used the, the idea of postcards as a great example. He says, he says, look, if you want to generate leads out of postcards, you don't send 50 and then start drawing conclusions from that. Right. You set a timeline, you decide to do it for a year, and you set aside the money, and you make the commitment to do it for X amount of time. Yes, you evaluate along the way, but you don't make any solid decisions until you reach what you've committed to and then you really start evaluating adjusting and, and by that time you'll have it start to have it dialed in you don't tamper with things or, or dabble with things for a month here a month there or in most agents cases a day here yeah. or, or, or a day or there a week is just like oh my god I didn't I didn't get a client in a week on my Facebook ads I must be I, I, I gotta stop them all you know it's like, guys eight months right. I went door knocking once months. and one person didn't like it oh yeah Oh, like I have that conversation all the time. Like door knocking doesn't work. How many times have you done it? Once. Yeah. Okay. Once. How many doors did you do? <laughs> About six. <laughs> Found the problem. <laughs> Found the problem. That's right. <laughs> I don't know. It is consistency, guys. On anything, the, any vertical you do, minimum eight months. Eight months to a year. That's when the gestation period yeah. starts turning. You get the top of the apex, and then you're, all the good stuff is going to start falling off and coming down to you. Because you build, you've built brand, you've built recognition, you've yeah. built, you know, something that people of value to these other folks that you're that you're going after. This is not. Yeah, I mean, there's literally. I mean, I would say there's probably three three 
lead sources that are the fastest converting in real estate and see if you agree with me on this. I um, don't. Number one would be expired listings. Number Sorry. two would be open houses, mm -hmm. looking for buyers that are actively looking. And then third after that would be internet buyer lead generation. And you have to sift through those. And the average time on those is about six months so before I, they actually convert and do a deal. I do agree with you on two of them, not the third. The internet lead generation, what I think is actually a much faster uh, you know, cash in your pocket would be working your sphere of influence. Getting out, talking to your friends and family. Um, dude, I'm not kidding you. Out of the 10 people, what I asked them to do in my AIM class this, this uh, last week was on Monday, go and talk to three people in your sphere of influence. People that know you, okay? Just go talk to them and bring up, you know, do the Ford system, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, and then let me know how that turns out for you. Five of them got clients. One of them got a contract in escrow. Holy cow. Yeah, and so and your AIM you know, class is how long? Three or four uh, weeks? A month. Yeah, a month. Four weeks. Okay, yeah. So they so, got a contract in escrow during your class. No, no. The, the, cool. the incredible part was it wasn't even it was during my class, but it was within from Monday to Wednesday, the next. Oh class. wow! And, he, and guess and guess who? And James, if you watch this, I'm gonna brag about you, buddy. And so James just moved from Southern California from Beverly Hills up here to NorCal, and so he's renting a room in a place and. He, he, he didn't really like his roommate or whatever, but he, you know, someone else in the house is like, Hey, go talk to your roommate. So he's like, eh, well, all right. So he went out and he talked to his roommate. He knew that his roommate was looking for something. He's like, Hey, you still work on that agent? No, the agent sucks. Oh, okay. Well, you want to go see anything? Yeah, let's go, let's go see something. Bam. It was that close to him. And he got his roommate into contract to buy something. So it, it can be anyone around you guys, anybody around you. That's that's why I say the sphere of influence, you know, getting an announcement letter out, not being a secret agent. That's your number one vertical. And then I would do open houses and then expires. That, that, that'd be mine. Yeah. And then the cool thing is, is once you have your platforms, let's say you actually do do it the right way. and You make the commitment. I think people and we all do this. I was thinking about this this morning. Uh, we all have the tendency to way overestimate what we can get done in the short term, whether it's a week or a month, and we us underestimate what we can get done in the long term. So imagine if, I mean, you, Greg, you brought up the example of doing pretty much just focusing on one thing for your first year, and and I guarantee you, agents are out there going, oh my God, I like I need business, like I I can't just like I got to do like 50 things, like I need clients. So, like you don't do you don't do fifty things once and get a bunch of clients. If you actually no. did and you focused on one thing and got good at it for that first year, and then you built on that, and the next year you focused on adding another pillar to your business. In four years, you're going to have your four pillars, and that's really all you need. And then you're just maximizing at that for the rest of your time in real estate. None of the top teams in real estate really have more than three or four pillars of their business firing on all cylinders. No, absolutely. You guys, if you're sitting there going, well, I need more, I need more things to do during my day. Fine. Here's your business plan. Write it down. It's going to make you money. Take your happy ass down to Starbucks or Pete's or a local coffee shop, whatever you want to do. I know it's blasphemy if it's not Starbucks for Matt. Um, <laughs> but, but, no, no. but I, just, I uh, love consistency. Go, go down, go down there, sit your ass down, open up your laptop. What I would do is I would get, where's this thing? Yeah, Maybe you're going to tell me a laptop like, sticker, or, aren't you? No, I'm going to change it up. Bring something like oh. this on or whatever. Just put it down on your table. Sit there and talk and drink coffee, guys. Then, you know what? Hand out 25 business cards every single day. I tell you this, I tell you this all the time. Nobody listens. Send 20 every single day. You know what? Change coffee shops twice a day. Guys, it's nearly free, and you will make a shit ton of contacts and money if you just do it. Now, if you guys do do this or anything else that we do, we tell you guys or advise you, we're not telling you, we're advising you on to do, please get in touch with me. I want to hear your stories, Matt. I, you know what I, What we should do, what we could do? What's up? I want to get a panel in a couple, maybe sometime this quarter or maybe early next quarter, a panel of people that have done the McDaniel Challenge, have put what we've talked about into action so that everybody else can kind of hear their success stories, the gestation timeframes, the revenue gen, and you know all of that stuff. So that's my challenge out to everybody who has taken or will take the McDaniel Challenge. We'd love to have you on a panel. Love it. Love the idea. That's awesome. Yeah, Matt, we are almost at bingo. We know what happens at an we hour. We are. We're almost out of time. So uh, a quick couple of shout outs. 
So again, viral marketing, check them out, getviral.com. They write a check to make podcasts and hangouts like these happen. So I just want to publicly thank them. And then equity. So if you want to generate uh, buyer leads online like we talked about, that's one of the only online lead gen sources that, that Greg is keeping in his team. He's dumping virtually everything else. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn about why that is, why he's keeping it and whether it's available in your market, it's super affordable. It's built from the ground up for solo agents, so it's perfect for that. Just take the McDaniel Challenge and get a hold of Greg. And then speaking of the McDaniel Challenge, how do people reach you, Greg? Matt, people can reach me on my personal private cell phone. It's 925-915-1978. Hashtag don't let Greg spend a night alone or go to mcdanielchallenge.com. Sign up with me. Matt is grinning from ear to ear that I got all of those out in one you good, did. solid it was, stream. It was he, perfect. Goodness. Look, look at my baby boy all grown up. All grown up. <laughs> 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 but uh, go oh, take the challenge, man. guys. Uh, February is starting to book up. Please don't make me spend the night alone. Seriously, I honestly, 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 honestly love my time with the view with our viewers and our listeners. Um, it really does make my night. I, I get prepped. I make sure that I am. I call you on the dot at six. I mean, I, I, may, I I'm respectful of your time, and I know that I, I'm so thankful that you reach out. We do this for you because of you. And so please let us help you in a bigger, more effective way. So take the challenge, guys. We really, we really care about your success. That's right. And we've got an awesome, awesome week coming up next week. We've got some really cool guests. I believe we've got James Callejas. We've got yeah. Michael Lee talking negotiation. Uh, we'll see about Monday. <laughs> uh, but we do have, uh, for sure, we have Jeff Le Latham on the show on Wednesday. He is a kick-ass real estate agent, team leader, and coach, and strategist based out of Washington. Uh, he's got a coaching company that works with both high-level real estate agents and mortgage lenders on how to not only grow their business, but growing their business while they're actually cutting back on their work hours and having more freedom and more time with their families. And we're going to talk about the work that he's doing and some of the what principles that he helps people put into place. Yeah, we're talking about one of the guys like Hal Elrod interviewed Jeff. And yeah. uh, the title of the interview was The Real Four Hour Work Week. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to interview Jeff Latham. So Me that's too. coming up on Wednesday of next week. So, so stay tuned, guys. Until then, have a phenomenal weekend, and we will see you on the next episode. Yeah, guys. See you later. Have a great weekend.